In this video, we'll be taking a look at how important it is to pair an RTX 4090 with a flagship CPU in order to achieve its full potential. In the GPU enthusiast space, it has been known for a while now that NVIDIA uses a software-based scheduler which runs as a process on the CPU in order for the GPU to execute related tasks. In contrast, AMD's Radeon GPUs feature a hardware-based scheduler which is responsible for distributing the various workloads across the GPU. This in theory should make the GPU less reliant on a CPU, resulting in better utilization. We'll be taking a look at the RTX 4090 and comparing gaming benchmark results when the 4090 is paired with a Ryzen 7 5800X, a CPU from 2020 with a Ryzen 9 7950X 3D a CPU that released earlier this year featuring AMD's latest Zen 4 architecture as well as their famous 3D vCache for best-in-class gaming performance. So for the test systems, there are two. This The older system is a 5800X base Zen 3 CPU platform. You can see the specs here. All tests were done at 4K with FSR 2 or 3 quality presets. So for those that aren't familiar with how the upscaling works, Ultra preset for 4K means 1440p is the internal render resolution. So these results are very similar to the 1440p native results that you would see. Ultra settings has also been used for all the games tested. And this is the other test system. So this one features a 750X 3D. So this is the latest Zen 4 architecture. And he, here are the specs and the driver versions. Uh, resizable bar is enabled for both systems. So for the first game, we have Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. The test results for the 7900XTX saw a 15% better minimum when moving from Zen 4, when moving to Zen 4 with 3D vCache. For the 4090, we see a 5% increase just from changing from Zen 3 to Zen 4X3D. So there is a slight improvement there, but what this tells me is that the game is still, for the most part, GPU bound. So it's it shows that it's good performance. It shows that this game is a modern title that utilizes both GPUs to their fullest. Next, I tested Shadow of the Tomb Raider because I was I've heard that this game can be very CPU bound. Uh, despite the fact that it's a single player game. So with the Radeon GPU, so the 7900XTX, we see a 3% uplift from going to the newer Zen 4 CPU. For the 4090, we see a 9% uplift, which is significant, so it does indicate there was a CPU bottleneck when using the older CPU. I also noticed higher CPU utilization while benchmarking compared to the XTX. This is in line with the fact that the GeForce driver uses a software scheduler which runs on the CPU. So you would expect to see higher utilization when gaming on a GeForce GPU, in particular 40 series GPUs with high SM counts. So very different approach from the hardware based scheduler included in Radeon GPUs. Next we have Horizon Zero Dawn. And with the 7900XTX, there's a 9% increase just from swapping CPUs. So this is a significant difference, particularly in the area of minimum FPS, resulting in a massive 69% improvement in the minimums. This was repeatable, so I don't know what it is. I couldn't really tell if it was just the fact that it was using the 3D vCache, which was improving the minimums for the Radeon GPU or what, but this one did see an improvement. 25% average improvement for the 4090 when we look at these results indicating a massive CPU bottleneck when pairing Nvidia's flagship GPU with any processor older than the latest X3D CPU from AMD. The minimums also saw a 14% improvement. Next up is Hogwarts Legacy. This title shows a massive CPU bottleneck for both GPUs. This is the only title where the Radeon GPU saw better improvement when paired with the newer CPU. That was a significant gain. So 34% improvement for average FPS and 49% improvement for the minimums. Switching over to the RTX 4090, we see a 30% improvement 
and a 50% improvement in minimum FPS. Since both GPUs saw roughly the same average, this indicates that both GPUs are being bottlenecked by the CPU. This test was done in Hogsmeade, which is the notorious... It's the city that's in the game that is the most notorious area for testing CPU bottlenecks. Uh, regardless of which CPU is used, you can tell it was CPU bound. The difference is the 7950X3D results in a better result since both GPUs perform the same. It indicates that there is a CPU bottleneck. The FPS is just higher across the board. Next up, I test The Last of Us Part 1. This game is another one that's really hard to run. And you can tell just from looking at the results for the Radeon GPU, there's a 1% average improvement, meaning changing the CPU doesn't help the 7900XTX that much in this title at 1440p or above. That does indicate that the game is relatively well optimized, or it's not, at the very least, it's not CPU bound when it comes to the Radeon GPU. The Radeon GPU is just pretty much maxed out. Shifting over to the 4090, however, we see a 5% uplift on average and a 9% improvement to the minimum, indicating that this GPU is near the limits of what it can do in this game, at least when paired up with the latest X3D CPU from AMD. The newer CPU helps it be better utilized since the CPU has more overhead to handle the software scheduler. Next is Star Wars Jedi Survivor, another UE4 game. This one was probably the most CPU-bound game that I tested, or just one of the most CPU-bound games to release in 2023. Even despite the fact that it's a single-player game, Star Wars Jedi Survivor sees a massive 22% improvement for the Radeon GPU when upgrading from Zen 3 to Zen 4. Uh, the X3D variant of Zen 4. So the minimum also sees a 28% uplift. Nearly 30% better minimum. This is significant and this is very noticeable. As for the RTX 4090, this GPU sees a whopping 47% improvement just by upgrading to one of the best CPUs for gaming. Minimum FPS is also up by 33%. It cannot be repeated enough how the X3D CPUs are just dominating when it comes to gaming performance. Jedi Survivor is the best example in my game collection that demonstrates Nvidia's driver overhead and how a current generation top gaming CPU is pretty much mandatory if you don't want to bottleneck the 4090. Last but not least, Starfield. This game has been really well optimized for RDNA 3 GPUs since launch, although not well optimized for pretty much everything else. As a result, even with the latest revision of the game, the 7900XTX only sees a 1% improvement when upgrading to the latest CPU. Minimums do see a 9% improvement, so there is still some benefit for Radeon users when upgrading to a newer CPU platform. The 4090 does see a 6% improvement when swapping over to AMD's X3D CPU along with a 7% improvement to the minimum FPS. So final results, the 4090 sees almost 20% better performance, meaning that any CPU from 2021 or older will result in a CPU bind scenario for the 40 series flagship. Meanwhile, what really surprised me, and this was really unexpected, was how the RDNA 3 flagship saw massive 24% improvement in the minimum FPS when paired with an X3D CPU. It does seem to show some significant improvement in that regard when looking at an all AMD based build. So final thoughts, in general, RTX 40 series does indeed have additional driver overhead, manifesting as higher CPU utilization while gaming, resulting in the need for a higher end CPU to keep it fully utilized. This overhead scales with SM count and clock frequency. 
Because the 40 series clocks much higher than previous generations while also having higher SM count, particularly on the 4090, this requires a beefy CPU to avoid being CPU bottlenecked. The key point to remember here is that you always want to be GPU bound in order to get the most out of the hardware. The Radeon GPU also benefits, but to a lesser degree. I think there are two reasons for this. The first is the 7900 XTX is just not as powerful as the 4090. So naturally, improvements to scaling shouldn't be as pronounced. That being said, it does see significant gains when paired with the latest CPU generation, particularly when it comes to the minimum FPS. The second reason is due to AMD featuring a hardware-based scheduler to assign work to the various components within the GPU. This does imply that Radeon GPUs are more independent of their CPU counterparts and as a result are potentially more platform agnostic, meaning you could avoid being CPU bound when using a Radeon GPU, particularly if using a lower core and thread count CPU such as a 6 core or just a much older CPU. And there you have it, that is my investigative look at NVIDIA's driver overhead and the software scheduler and how that compares to a hardware based scheduler and what that means if you want to pair a 4090 with an older platform just because you don't want to upgrade your CPU for whatever reason. So hope you guys found this video useful. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.